votes in both polls right now. Just how do you feel seeing that? Um, yeah, it's it's nice to see that um, you know our our early start has been you know, being recognized for you know the guys' efforts. Um, but you know, shortly after that happens, you, you you have to just keep keep your head down and stay focused on, on what you got to get done and get better at. And um, but you know, there's and there's other parts of the building that have to make sure we we utilize that recruiting and recognize the um, the progress that we've made and make sure every, you know that the uh, recruits and things are are utilizing that as well. Our our guys have uh, I, I think have handled it and understood from. Um, Really, a year ago, we, we talked about things that as things started to change, they're going to see that though the approach and expectations are going to be are, are going to stay consistent, and and I think that's one thing to be uh, you know to be a consistent progressive program is that you you have to keep your 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 expectations and your work ethic and and your attention to detail, all those things need to stay the same. And we talked about as a staff on Sunday, that we, we yeah, it's, it's nice to be three and old, but it's, it's only as good as what we're gonna do this week as well. And, and, and staying locked into the, to the, the small things and the expectations of our players on and off the field have to remain consistent. And uh, you know, that's what we plan to do. Did the message change at all of the team this week or is it the same as last year? No, it's been pretty consistent. Obviously, we're playing a good football team that's well coached and, and uh, they're playing with a lot of confidence. And, and again, they haven't lost the game. And um, it's a team that uh, though the new coaching staff, a lot of the same players, uh, you know, got after us last year at their place. Um, so that, that should be another reason we should have a good focus. Um, you know, it's great to be back home after a couple on the road. And, Important that we have a good crowd. We could have a good crowd for, for a lot of different reasons, but I think we have a chance now to create some energy and, and home field advantage. And I, I think those are the things that hopefully, as it progresses, excites them, but at the same time um, keeps them grounded on, on, on how to go about it. And I think, again, the basis of your question is how, how does this program holistically, from top all the way through, handle success? And. Uh, we're doing a good job, but we, we got to make sure we, we you know, it's, it's easy to get distracted. And, but I think once they're in this building, they've done a good job. I, I know you're a one week at a time, play who's in front of you type of guy. Did you allow yourself to, to think about the way the schedule set up, to think about what 3-0 and coming home for your next home game would look like or feel like? Uh, look ahead. I, I, you know, I, I think when you look at, the spring and summer, you looked at some things. Uh, um, you you want to feel that you, you know, again, when we, when we talked at the beginning in here, you know, we talked about, well, okay, we're better, but how much better? Um, you know, how does it compare to everybody else getting better? Um, you know, you look at it and you end the season with somebody you play second game of the year and, you, and you're hoping you can go, go on the road and play well. Um, but yeah, then, then you're, you know, then for the second consecutive year, you're playing a group of five school that's in the top 25 preseason and high expectations. So, you don't, you know, I don't sit there and, and, and play prediction games or what's the, you know, what's our win total or where we're, where we're thinking we're hoping. But, um, you know, after the West Virginia game, do you, do you feel good about where, where the team's at handling different circumstances? Uh, yeah, you know, you, you want to feel that you can go down and, and, and play well and play everybody again. And much like West Virginia, when all of a sudden you're looking, you're down two scores pretty quickly. You're, you, you know, you, you've got to try to just get back to where it needs to be. Now we're sitting in, in, in a spot that this program hasn't seen in a long time, but back to the original statement before your question is, we spend a lot of time, guys, worrying about that. It, you know, we're never going to keep moving to our full potential. So um, I'm very proud of these guys. I'm very proud of our staff. I, I'm all those things, but you know, I don't walk up like down the hall and tell them how proud I am every minute. That, that was probably a fault of mine, maybe. But uh, um, I don't know. 
you, you brought up the two score thing, and I wonder how do you address that? What what you obviously can't keep starting that way, right? Right, but it's different reasons. I mean, there's there, there's some things that we've got to start better, probably on the defensive side, that where we've given up the points. Um, you know, I, I I credit the part that we got it we get it figured out a little bit. We play a little more confident. We got to come out and play. A little more confidently, maybe aggressively, um, early. Um, but um, again, it's important for us to get off the good offensive starts too, so we can, uh, you know, three and out and, and punt the ball. And there's really a, you know, um, yeah, we we need to start better. There's no doubt about it. Because one of these times you're not going to rebound from it. Um, can't live that way all the time. So. I also wanted to ask you consistency. Obviously, a big part of what you're about, what you've been about at past stops, all of that. Is there one area of, of being consistent here in your 18 months that, that you're most proud of or you've seen that maybe has led to where you guys are today? That'd probably be good for probably somebody other than for myself maybe because I you know, just kind of do it. Uh, I'd still say that you know, to that point of win or lose, I, I think what we walked in, the expectations and um, uh, of what we do and how we run practice and, and even so of that is it's kind of been there. Uh, in fact, we, we, we continue to challenge and find ways, but you know, when you're not, at, you know, I've always said this is that, you know, you're not in someone else's program in season or to watch what they do. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm just, 16 years being a head coach now, it's like you, you kind of do it, and that, that doesn't mean we don't tweak it and look at it and talk about it, but um, you know, we, we look at our schedules every day and find find ways that we make, make, make small adjustments, but um, I go back to the opening statement sometimes with our players and what they were asking for, and I think that continuity of, of those things has helped us. I think our staff alignment has helped us in this early part. Um, and I also think the time that we've been able to get with our players now for over a year is definitely helpful. You know, again, defensively, I, I, I'd say our depth in, in, in some areas, you know, that we, we thought we had and, and to be able to, um, maybe not as much in, in some areas as others, but play a lot of guys and, and, and do some things there. And, and I think that will continue to pay. Um, they did it into we move through the season, but probably most importantly, offensively, that you know, um, starting up front, just how I think our how consistent and well um, we play. Uh, I think what we've been able to do offensively and the variety of what we do has taken some of the pressure off our offensive linemen, and of course, the play of, of, of Jalen has been outstanding. Um, and then you take everyone else around that I haven't mentioned, 11 guys catching passes, the multiple guys that are carrying the ball. Um, you know, uh, kind of back to almost the schedule question is like, yeah, you don't spend a lot of time worrying about where your players are so-called ranked in conference or nationally, and I don't know if we'll ever, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll earn our way there. But, um, We've got a collection of guys that can be very productive in what we're doing and it's starting to show. And I think others will, will have opportunities as we progress. And that's what I really like. Um, I showed our players uh, and really the whole team on uh, Monday, Monday morning staff meeting, the, the participation sheet that you get in the recap. Okay, you, you look at our opponent's participation versus how many players were playing. And, and you're kind of looking at because you, you may have noticed it as well. And we got a lot of guys that are getting on the field. And there and there's some of them are hungry to get on the field more. But I'm I'm glad because to build a program for, for the long haul is something that you want to be able to get guys on the field. Um, like I've always said about our practice model and things like that is you build confidence, you build depth, you help morale. And those are the things I think when I kind of show maybe a little different and, and it's starting to help us uh, and it's and it's showing itself this this far um, this early in the season. Yeah, obviously the four game redshirt rule. You may mention it there with the guys playing. Yeah, I guess how do you approach that when you have? Well, you know, game? there's you know kind of look at it. There's there's a few that are kind of targeted that way. There could be a couple more. Um, 
you know, again, it's kind of like the situation with Jalen, you know, a year ago. You know, there's it, if it gets to that, some guys think, you know, we have that discussion. It's kind of a more down the road um, angle because if you don't know what you what's going to happen injury wise or something that forces you to play. So, um, but you know, there hopefully will be opportunities for for players, maybe maybe younger players, as they continue progressing through that, I'm using that word a lot today, but getting through the season that um, you know, maybe that last third of the season they get a chance to, to play on special teams or rotate in. So you try to spread that out of where we're, where we're going to use some guys, but uh, um, you know, we did bring in a ton of true freshmen, so you know, some guys have used years already, so it, it, it's kind of a, a you know, it's still up in the air on that. You mentioned the dip, defensive depth earlier. At this point in the season, how important is that in terms of just keeping guys fresh as you get the playing time more throughout the season? It is, and some of our snap counts we looked at sometimes, you know, could be a weather delay and then another guy back out that, that somebody might have missed a rotation, but, you know, he have been off for an hour, so that guy's, you know, he's fresh, you know. And, uh, but it's helping us. Um, it's helped us with reps and confidence when things do, when guys are banged up or unfortunately will be or in, in wear and tear. I'm just watching our guys move around and um, I thought they moved pretty well today. Um, talking to a couple yesterday, they talked about that their bodies have, um, feel a lot better than they did a year ago at this time. Um, talked with Matt Gildersleeve about certain things. You know, he's talking about some of our younger players and, or newer players on the roster in that you know, that we have, you know, he has the data that will show that we have guys that have, you know, are gaining strength during the season, which isn't common. And, and you know, really about, you know, some of the ways we do some things. So if a guy is getting stronger, understanding the, the scheme better, he'll have a chance to help this team down the road as well. Again, all those things besides some of the guys that we've been able to get on the field early, um, you know, hopefully pays dividends three straight home games isn't something that happens very often. What are kind of the, the pros and cons of having a legitimate homestand? Yeah, I, uh, I'd have to think back of you know, the last time I've gone through one of those other than, well, probably the best I've ever had is that when I was coaching Division Three, you know, we got able to get like four home games in a row in the playoffs. And if it was the last season, last home game of the season, you get five at home and it's, uh, it can really help you because of routine. It can help you, obviously, the, you know, some of you, you know, that, some of you in the room that travel with, you know, as well, you, you know what that's like, getting home at, well, after midnight many times. So I, I think that's going to help us that way. Um, but again, home game's going to be distracted in other ways. So you have to balance it. I'm excited because, again, to stand here and where we're at with three wins, and three home games in a row. And I just know that in my year and a half or wherever we're at now of being here, listening to our fans, the, you know, the loyal fans have been waiting for, for something, starving for something of being successful. Um, hopefully it's meshing at the right time that we, we have uh, three weeks of great crowds and, and great crowds that can be uh, beneficial um, to help this program take another step. What are your thoughts on the rushing defense so far, and what are your thoughts on what Duke's going to bring you this week? Um, you know, Duke, uh, well, first of all, um, we're getting better at run defense. Uh, um, I, I think we play a little more aggressively uh, than we did uh, up front this, this last week. I, I thought we did a good job of containing that run game. Um, you know, they had some dynamic players at, at on that Houston roster, and I thought all in all, with their bigger playmakers, we, you know, especially after those first couple of series, we, 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 we slowed it down enough. Um, so um, I would say work in progress because sometimes, again, stats, points allowed in today's college football world can get really skewed in different ways, and if you get hung up on those, um, you might drive yourself crazy. Um, but we definitely played better. Uh, in that front seven, um, 
the Duke, I like I said, schematically, they're, they're very well coached. Their, their, their quarterback has a great understanding of where to go with the ball. He's very accurate. He's going to have always 72, 73 percent of his, um, you know, they went on the road and beat a, you know, a Northwestern team that just come off another win, a, a big win against Nebraska and things like that. They're, you can see that on both sides of the ball that they're, they're executing with confidence. You know, very, I say similar, you know, a lot of those guys were on the field last year. They added a couple guys uh, to the defensive secondary for sure. And um, backs, backs run hard, okay? They understand what, what how they're, you know, again, within the scheme and the running game, what are they, and, and they run downhill and they're physical. And some playmakers again on the outside to, to get the ball in space and make things happen. And, and um, again, uh, the challenge will be there. Uh, on Duke, does it help your focus? Does it help your team stay locked in, knowing that they are unbeaten and it's obviously another tough test? I would sure hope so, you know, and, and, and motivate things. Um, um, I also hope that we're. Um, grounded enough to know that uh, you know we, we, we're nowhere near a point where we're going to show up and, and, and blow it out and think it's going to take care of itself. Um, but that's our responsibility also during the week to prepare them in those ways that uh, make sure that, you know, not just physically, mentally, we're ready to go, but I, I think it adds to, to excitement, of course, that, uh, you know, two, three, no teams now, it's, it's uh, you know, you know, you talk about if it's a, a big game or an important game, it's, you know, you get a chance to be in these. And you know, I was telling them that the reason why it gets to be a bigger game now is because you're making it so by what, what your past performance did. And if you enjoy that and thrive on that, you got to make sure you're ready to go again. Uh, I also wanted to ask you, I know you're not watching Saturday pregame shows and, and, and paying attention to all that stuff, but, but you have to be aware. I mean, there's a lot of attention on, on the program, on you. Do, do you – are you comfortable with that? Do you enjoy that Kansas and, and Lance Leipold are names that are being talked about all over the place right now? <laughs> well, you're to see the ratings. <laughs> um, no, I'm really proud that the program is getting its, its due recognition and our players are for their efforts. Um, that's what's important. Um, it isn't a player. It's not Lance Leipold. It's a, it's a program and a staff that, that has worked extremely hard since we arrived. It's a group of players that have bought in and continue all those things I'm excited for, you know, and, and, and for us to, to, to get our little, you know, uh, time nationally is, is good. It's, it's all the things we've kind of tried to touch on through things. It's good for our, our current players. It's good for future players. It's good for this university and our community. I, I just, you know, we, um, no, but we're not DVRing it, running it back and forth. Okay, it's it, but you know it's it, it's just like everything else. You get a take. Hopefully, you're going to do that. That we can continue to build excitement and consistent excitement.